Hi everyone, my name is Avon Hansen. I'm a fashion and portrait photographer. I'm also a Nanlite ambassador. And today I am here with my friend Tam and I'll be showing you how to create an exciting workflow for portraiture. Today I'll be showing you how we can um, basically create exciting different compositions. Uh, we're gonna go through um, some beautiful headshot lighting and then I'll also be showing you how we can create some exciting um, shapes with the light so it looks a bit more editorial. So for the first setup, I'll be using the F FC500B as our key light. For the hair light, I'm using the Forza 60B Mark II for um, highlighting the hair. Um, we'll be also using the 300B for creating nice catch lights in the eyes. And we're also using something that is called a clamshell reflector. And the reason I'm using a clamshell reflector is that we're able to create really nice catch light in the eyes. So if you zoom in on uh, Tam Tam's face, you can see we've got a really nice curvature on the eyeballs and you get a really nice uh, connection between the camera and the model. Um, I've also got the uh, Power Slims in the background set to max and basically what I'll be doing is just showing you how to do a quick little um, headshot workflow and then also how we can kind of change the colors in the background so we can basically get a lot of different options in a really short amount of time. So, um, I think maybe the background light is a little bit too bright. So basically, I'll be going into the app. As you can see here, I've got all the lights connected to the Nanlink 2.0 app. And because I don't want the background light to be as bright as it is, because I think it looks a bit like a passport photo, for now, I'm just going to turn off the background lighting. So it will come across now as a bit more gray which for me is going to come across as a bit more editorial, especially with this lighting. So when you're working with a white backdrop and you kind of want to isolate the subject from the background, it's important to work with um, lights that have like these grids or honeycombs on it. And as you can see now, I've got the beauty dish with a um, softbox on and this light is going to bleed a lot into our background. So to avoid this, I'm going to take off the beauty dish and I'm going to put a, a grid on it. Um, so yeah, I've put um, a honeycomb grid on now. Um, so it's just to kind of control the light. I just want to have it so I get a nice little catch light in the corner of Tam's face. So I'm doing a very close up portrait of Tam Tam. So I want to make sure his eyes are quite illuminated. So I'm bringing this table really close to his eyes so we get really nice reflections. So if we look now at the previous image where the background was very like illuminated, now I've turned off both lights and we've got a grid on this one. And instead of pointing at Tam Tam, it's just pointing down into the reflector and bouncing up into Tam Tam's face. And then I'm going to just increase the brightness on the 300B, which right now is just at 9%. And you see now, I just brought it up to like 40%, so we get a nice little catch light just in the corner of his eye. Cool. Tilt your head a little bit for me, Tom. Gorgeous. We basically turned our white background into a nice gray image. And we've also created some separation in the hair with the hair light. What you can do now in the app, we can click here and then create a new fixture group. And I'm just going to call it Pavo Slim, like that, create. And then I'm just going to select the two power slims like this. What I'm gonna do now, I'm going to click on the power slim and then I'm gonna go here on effects mode. So we're gonna do a pulse. And basically it is going to go from the darkest to the brightest. So basically while I'm shooting, the background light is just pulsing from bright to dark. I can have the model in one position and then the lights just go from brighter to darker. So it helps kind of create a nice little dynamic workflow in terms of like different lighting setups. Instead of going back to CCT mode, which is the Kelvin range, I'm just going here on HSI, which is the full color spectrum. So I can just choose whatever color I want. So let's say we've got, maybe we can make a nice little blue color. So I want to kind of have like a nice little complementary color in there, hence why the background is this bluish tint. Um, so if I go back on the app and then I open the Forza 60B. So the Forza is now in 2700 Kelvin and then our key lights, they're both at 5600 Kelvin. Chin up for me, beautiful. A little bit big this way. There, a little bit down with the chin. Great, beautiful. Got a nice kind of 
bluish tint and it kind of almost looks like uh, like um, like a kind of day daytime kind of look and the cool thing now is I can take the brightness of this image so if I go back here into the power slims so the brightness is now on a hundred percent if I bring this down it's actually going to make the blue look more saturated so I'm bringing this down and then I'm gonna do another portrait to your head a little bit for me they're beautiful and if we go back here into capture one we've got a nice even blue hue going around and remember how I said about having a dynamic workflow the cool thing now is if so you see I'm on 29% and rather than going through the different colors manually you can just click here on HSI mode and then you can go on effect mode again and you can click here on the pulse instead of having a pulse we're gonna go on something called the hue loop so while the background is just changing colors I can just take pictures of Tam while everything is changing and magically here in capture one we've got lots of different color options in the background so this is um, how I would do a kind of beauty portrait uh, set up. It is great for actors headshots. It's great for personal branding for businesses. It is very versatile uh, You can also fluctuate between darker and brighter backgrounds just by uh, changing a few settings on your phone Also in addition to portraiture um, as you can already tell this is uh, Continuous lights and the amazing thing about working with continuous lights is that it translates directly into motion and video so we are able to have very nice dynamic shots especially if you're doing like for example interviews or working on like short films or something it's great to have kind of these settings just like working their own magic in the background so yeah now I'm just changing it around a bit the first kind of setup was very light and airy it's very kind of good lighting for like like I said per before like personal branding or headshots and stuff and we kind of want to make it a bit more moody so we're just kind of removing we're, uh, we're getting rid of the clamshell reflector and I've moved the beauty dish over to the side so it's kind of become our new kind of main light um, and I've dimmed the 500B so it's just going to be a little bit of fill so we kind of don't lose any detail in the clothing I'll do a couple of portraits like this and then I'm going to move that light around after um, let's see, move one hand across, or maybe like there, that's nice. And then twist a little bit towards me. There, that's great. And then chin up. I think we could probably also get a little bit of fill light with the Pavel Slim. So we're going back to CCT mode. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of separation. And for this shot, I'm also going to kill the hair light. I just need to adjust a little bit because he was seated and he's a bit taller. So right now what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to take the grid off. My key light here and rather than pointing it directly at Tam Tam, it's more facing me. And the reason I'm doing that is so that we kind of like get um, all of the side light coming, spilling off of the soft box. And basically that means that you are catching the softest light of it. If we're pointing the light directly onto Tam Tam's face, it gets a bit too harsh and it's also going to spill on our backdrop. So I'm just kind of angling it a bit more here and then I'm just increasing the exposure a bit more on my camera. And then I've got a little bit of fill happening with the 500B, but not that much. And what I'm going to do now with the backdrop is um, go back to the pulse like we did before. And I am just going to put it on a really fast pulse. So it's basically going to fluctuate from the darkest to the brightest and I'm going to shoot high speed. So basically we're going to record a bunch of different nice options. And there. Chin up for me, beautiful. So you can see now we get a really nice um, spectrum of options. So if you're working with the client and you've got these light pulsing in the background, it's really easy for the client to kind of see if it works with the darker or a brighter hue. Um, and yeah, you can then uh, quickly go on effect mode and then we'll go instead of pulse, we'll just go on back on the hue loop. There, twist a little bit towards me. Gorgeous, chin up, beautiful. Look at the light. There, great, nice. Maybe spread your legs a little bit there and then twist towards me, maybe one hand down. There, yeah, that's great. Twist towards me. There, yeah, beautiful, that looks great. 
Turn your head up this way a little bit. For our final setup for this video, I want to show how we can play with a bit more dramatic shapes with the light. So I'm going to take the Forza 60B and I'm going to put a projector attachment on it. And we're going to bring back the um, clamshell reflector. And rather than just illuminating the whole face, the only reason I'm having it now is just so we create a reflection in Tam's eyes. And remember that eyes are more reflective than skin. So I can actually make this quite dark and still get a reflection in the eye. And then the main focus is going to be our Forza 60B. So we're only going to have two lights on, which is going to be the 500B and the 60B. So I'm creating this kind of vertical line going across Tam's face. If you look straight on at me, there, beautiful. And beautiful. Tilt your head a little bit to the side. That's great. Lovely. The only thing I feel we're missing now is a little bit of separation between Tam and the background. So I'm going to bring back um, the light with the power slims. And instead of putting in a pulse like I did before, I'm just going to go it back on CCT and just bring up the brightness just ever so slightly. And there we go. We've got a beautiful editorial looking portrait. We've got this nice line going across Tam's face and we've got a nice bit of sharpness here. You can see we've got the reflection from the clamshell, uh, but still everything else is nice and dark. And yeah, this uh, can also be um, converted into color if we want to play with that again. Um, so I, all you have to do now is uh, go change from CCT back to HSI and maybe you want to have like a nice dark red background. So let's see if we want to make it dark, we just bring it to like 10% maybe. And then let's see, look at me. There, beautiful. Chin up a little bit. Yeah, great. Um, so yeah, now that I've shown how we can create nice like editorial lighting using the projector attachment on Tam's face, I just want to also show how we can do some really cool compositions using um, silhouettes. So basically I'm going to make the background as bright as possible and I'm going to make this our key light. Let's see. So basically what I'm trying to do now, I'm just uh, trying to create a bit more distance between the model and the light. Um, as you might have noticed, I don't have the biggest studio, but I am able to make it work somehow. Uh, but yeah, if you look at Tam now, I am just kind of creating a line that is going a bit more like across their body. Keep in mind that's your main light and that's the light you should kind of like pose against. Great. I'm going to turn on the 500 and I'm just going to add a little bit of fill light there great beautiful that's nice love that look up that way there great and then now quickly we can also just go here into the app click on CCT mode on the um, um, power slim and then we'll go back here on effect mode and we've got it running on a hue loop just doing the same thing again, but with different lighting. Lovely. So I really hope you enjoyed um, getting an insight into how I use Nanlite's products into my own workflow. Um, I really enjoy working with color, but I also love working with like really contrast shadows. And I think these products that Nanlite have are such an amazing tool in my kit. And yeah, if you stick around for the next episode, I'm going to show you how I create like multi-chrome portraiture, which is all about mixing different colors. It's about gradients and breaking up uh, um, the colors so we don't have just one color backdrop, but something that goes into a gradient. Thank you so much, Tam Tam, for your help. And we'll see you next episode.